Jersey. 100 miles south of England, 15 miles from the French coast. A British dependency with ancient links to the crown, which in the 21st century boasts a world-class offshore finance center. Its freedom to print its own money, set its own taxes and govern itself stretches back over 800 years. To mark that independence and to celebrate its links with the monarch, Jersey is producing a 100 pound note. It carries, of course, the image of the queen, for this self-governing island, perched on the edge of the English Channel, is a peculiar of the crown, which has always owed its allegiance not to the British government at Westminster, but direct to the sovereign. Jersey is a proud, confident island which knows its place in the world. But the success it enjoys today has had to be earned. Down the centuries, the people of Jersey have been adaptable, even ahead of their times, and never afraid to lead. In the 17th century, they fished for cod off the banks of Newfoundland. When Britain and France were at war for a hundred years, they were privateers. In the 20th century, after five years of Nazi occupation, the island rebuilt its economy by creating a first-class offshore finance industry, serving not only the city of London, but also investors worldwide. Today, there's a public holiday to mark the date, 9th of May, 1945, that Jersey was liberated from German occupation. The liberation in 1945 was a defining moment for Jersey people. The island was effectively bankrupt, but islanders had stood alone during the five years of occupation, and gradually a new sense of uh, self-confidence began to emerge. We created a reputable and highly successful uh, finance industry. And over the last 15 years in particular, we have earned a place on the world stage. We have begun to assert an international identity and a national pride. And uh, I think that that will continue in the years ahead. After the Second World War, farming and tourism were Jersey's main industries. For its early potato, still famous the world over, and for the Jersey cow, loved at home and widely exported, and for its long summers, it became known as Britain's South Sea Island. Stop for a moment and wonder, where is this place and what makes it what it is? The clear gold sunlight of an April morning is part of it, the gentle sound of the sea about the great amphitheatre of sand and cliffs below the hamlet of St. Juan is part again. But the essence of the place is in the deep sunk lanes, making tunnels in the green of summer before the buds have opened across the sea. Jersey is as popular as ever with holidaymakers, but this is an island of contrasts. The deep sunk lanes are still there. They're still planting the Jersey royal potato in the rich, dark soil and exporting the Jersey cow. But in the capital, St. Helier, the real business of this community is trade. Trade with all corners of the globe. Investors put their money in Jersey because it remains a stable, low-tax jurisdiction in an unstable world. Its finance professionals are surrounded by the highest caliber of lawyers and accountants, trust and insurance specialists. They've molded a finance sector which is resolutely offshore, politically outside Europe, but which is committed to being a good neighbour to the European Union. Jersey is the largest of the 16 um, British uh, Crown dependencies in overseas territories. Uh, we have a workforce of around 13,000 people, one in four of our working population work in finance, and they manage or administer over a trillion dollars in value which is sourced from over 200 countries around the world. 
It's a combination of political and fiscal stability that the deep breadth and depth of expertise here is seen as very attractive around the world. So we really are one of the first choice centres for international clients. Jersey is a progressive jurisdiction where, in every area, the highest standards are applied. Its telecommunications network is at the forefront of technology. Businesses enjoy one of the fastest broadband connections anywhere. The island is well connected in other ways. There are over 20 flights to and from London every day and links to 30 European destinations, including Zurich and Geneva. And in St. Helier, world-class architects and artists have been commissioned to create a modern working environment. None of this would have been possible without a single decision at a special moment in time. Geographically, the Channel Islands are closer to France than England. They were originally part of the Duchy of Normandy. So in 1066, when William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy, defeated Harold at Hastings, Jerseymen felt they were on the winning side. For over 150 years after the Norman Conquest, the kings of England were also the Dukes of Normandy. But in 1204, Philip II of France invaded and reclaimed Normandy. Channel Islanders faced a stark choice. Swear allegiance to Philip of France and retain their estates in Normandy, or stay loyal to King John of England. Jersey chose the English crown, and by that momentous decision, acquired the constitutional autonomy that endures to this day. It was also a courageous decision, for their cousins in Normandy were suddenly their enemies, and the castle of Montaguay, overlooking the royal Bay of Grouville in one direction and the French coast in the other, is a reminder of frequent French attacks. The French finally came ashore in 1781. The island surrendered, but a young British major, Francis Pearson, rallied his troops and attacked the invaders in the Royal Square. He defeated the French, but lost his life in the process. The Battle of Jersey lasted just 15 minutes, but its memory lives on in a painting by the American artist John Singleton Copley, which hangs today in Tate, Britain. In Diamond Jubilee year, it's being loaned to the Jersey Museum to remind islanders of how their history could have been very different. For their loyalty to the English crown in 1204, reaffirmed many times thereafter, islanders were allowed to retain their customs, their language, and their laws based upon the laws of Normandy, and to set their own taxes. Successive kings and queens confirmed these rights through the ages, and their charters are here to remind anyone who doubts it. The most visible symbol of these rights and freedoms is the silver gilt mace given by Charles II when the monarchy was restored after the Civil War. It's one of the island's greatest treasures. It carries the initials of the king, C.R. It also has the wonderful imperial crown uh, at the top. Uh, and this wonderful mace is very much a symbol of that loyalty to the crown. The mace is still in use. It precedes the bailiff, the island's civic head, as he enters the parliament, known as the States of Jersey. It's a permanent reminder of Jersey's ancient history. To celebrate its links with the crown, Jersey commissioned artist Chris Levine and holographer Rob Munley to produce an unusual portrait of Queen Elizabeth II as a hologram. It was the first time a reigning monarch had been portrayed in 3D. Their work quickly became iconic. Chris Levine named it Equanimity. And it speaks of a unique relationship which has stood the test of time. The hologram hangs in the heart of the island's great Norman castle, and versions of it travel the world as the centerpiece of an exhibition marking 60 years of Elizabeth's reign. 
it encapsulates the modern image of Jersey, that we take our position, our responsibility, our success very seriously. We're credited with having one of the best regulated financial services industries uh, in the world and that we're a modern community that's culturally rich but take our responsibilities seriously as we've moved into the 21st century. Part of that rich culture is the way in which the Crown is represented in Jersey by the latest in a long line of governors, stretching back to Sir Walter Raleigh. Please raise your right hand. The present Lieutenant Governor, General Sir John McCall, is impressed by Jersey's history and its ability to change with the times. This Jersey has had to endure the demise of the shipbuilding industry with the advent of iron and steel. And then, of course, there was the occupation during the Second World War. There was fundamental alterations to the agricultural and tourism industry. All of this Jersey has come through. It has not only survived, but it has subsequently prospered. And um, as a consequence of, all, of, of that collective experience, it has an identity which is, first of all, unique, but it's also fiercely independent. So all of that comes together to produce a, a, an absolutely enthralling place to come and be. And we count ourselves very, very fortunate indeed to be here. Tradition and stability and confidence underpin Jersey's trade with the world. People here work hard and play hard. There are a few finance centers where you can be dealing with stock markets in London, New York, and Hong Kong one minute, and surfing the next. This peculiar of the crown sees nothing strange about celebrating its loyalty to the monarch and its special constitutional relationship with the United Kingdom while running a state-of-the-art finance center. Heritage and integrity, pride in the past and a strong faith in the future have combined to make Jersey unique.